Before we are finishing off this section, I want to talk a bit more about the lines of execution logic, because there are a few things that I haven't covered yet. Let's go through them. The most important part is that how you see lines differs from how Python sees them. A really good example here is that Python does not see empty lines in the code, only you do. And let me illustrate what I mean. If I start typing print and let's call it first line and then duplicate the line and type in second line. If I execute this code, I get first line and second line. This is the stuff we have already seen quite a lot. It should be fairly obvious by this point. However, what happens if I add a space in here? Now we have a line of code, nothing, and another line of code. If I run all of this now, we are still seeing the same result. The reason being that Python ignores a line without any code. If there's nothing on the line, Python is just going to ignore it. Meaning what you could be doing is add a huge amount of white space and it would not make any difference to your code, which is very often something you do want to work with quite extensively because this is making it much easier to organize your code. Especially if you add more comments with something like, let's say, second line, and then this could be the first line. You could have a setup like this, which in your case might make it much easier to read. But all that Python sees is this line and this line here, which is giving you a ton of work to customize whatever explains your code the best. But there are quite a few more things that you should be aware of. What I have also covered is that Python ignores white space with inner line, meaning you can add as many spaces as you want. Let's have a look at this one as well. For example, what I could be doing inside of a string, I could add as much white space as I want. And this one is going to be reflected in the code I am running. What I can also do is add white space between the different parts of the code. Something like this would still work just fine. Although granted, in this case, there isn't much reason to do something like this. I suppose something slightly more relevant might be we could add one plus two plus four and so on. And for this line, Python would just ignore the white space. Meaning if I run this, we are just getting the result. Python doesn't care what you do between these lines, which I suppose you could be using for something like five multiplied by five and then plus 10. So you indicate which operation comes first, the five multiplied by five, although still kind of a stretch. What you can also do is use tab. You can add this as much as you want. Python doesn't care it treats tabs like white space. That being said, there's something really important. And that is Python really cares about the indentation of an entire line. Let me demonstrate this. This is going to become incredibly important later on. What we have seen so far is that these indentations do not matter to Python. However, what Python does care about is if this entire line is indented. If I indent this entire line and run this again, Python is going to give me an error. The error we are getting is called indentation error, unexpected indent. Why that is, you are going to learn later. What you have to keep in mind for now is that inside of a line, you can add as much white space as you want, but you couldn't add white space when you start the line. Like here, Python is not going to like that. But all right, there's one more topic I do want to cover. And that is how to break the line space, or at least how to make it a bit more flexible. Because you can create multiple lines of code in one line. The reason here, again, is what you see as a line and what Python sees as a line are two separate things. If you want to be a bit more specific about it, what you see is a physical line. All that really means is whatever is in a single line of code. It's as simple as that. But what Python sees is a logical line. And this is what gets executed one step at a time. Let me demonstrate this one as well, actually. 
Let me clean all of this up actually so things are a bit easier to read. We have two physical lines and two logical lines, meaning what we see and what Python sees is identical. We have this line and we have this line. However, what I can do now is put both of these print statements on the same line. And Python isn't going to like this at all. And the reason here is that for us, this is one physical line and we can, I guess, read it. But to Python, this is one logical line now that doesn't make sense. Python can only execute one of these functions at a time. It has to execute this line first and then this line second. It cannot do them at the same time, which is why we are getting an error here. Although this logic you can break to some extent. And there are two ways of doing that. The first one is you can use a semicolon. And this way you can separate a physical line into logical lines. All of this here would be a physical line, but because of the semicolon, Python is going to break this one out into two logical lines and is going to keep happy. The opposite operation, I suppose you could call it, would be a forward slash. This one is breaking two physical lines into one logical line. This is something you are going to use fairly often if you have a really long operation. The example here is we're just adding some numbers and at some point we ran out of monitor space. As a consequence, we wanted to have all of this on the same line. Meaning this is two physical lines, but because of the forward slash, Python turned all of this into one logical line and keeps being happy. So all is good. And let's have a look at those two. And then we are done with this entire section. And I guess we can start with the semicolon. If I put print and print on the same line, run this again, Python is going to be unhappy. But if I put a semicolon between the two, then Python is going to remain happy because this semicolon is breaking a logical line. Now, that being said, this semicolon you are probably never going to use, or at the very least, you are very rarely going to use it. It really is very, very uncommon. What is, however, much more common is, let me create another variable. Let's call it A. What you do see fairly often is some kind of very long math operation. Let's say one plus two plus three plus four plus five, and this could go on forever, and you want to break this up. And for that, you would use a forward slash, and then on the next line, you can continue writing the line as you would normally do. Meaning I could add a plus six, plus seven, plus eight, and so on. If I now print a and run this, we are getting a proper result. Keeping your code readable is a priority that you want to keep in mind. And the forward slash is really useful for that. But all right, with that, we have all of the basics covered.